Good morning, lovely Sunday morning. Uh, carrying out a survey on this property, it's a um, council house, X1. It's void, about to be done up. Very, very damp. I just want to show you how damp it is, and just to explain that this is not rising damp. Come and have a look. Here we are then in the uh, central hall, solid floors. This is a post war council property, um, empty at the moment. There we can see lots and lots of mould growth in the corner there. Um, this will have been very pleasant uh, for our tenant. Some up round the window reveals. There we are, plenty round the reveals there, all down the side, not nice. Radiator in the internal dividing wall. Let's just have a look in the lounge. Same sort of thing next to the chimney breast there, horrendous black mould. Just move along, another beautiful little triangle, typical uh, high humidity indicator. Along the bottom of course there, there we've got more. If we go up to the window, let's just have a look. Oh, right where that concrete lintel lives. Because of course, post-war, shortage of wood. Shortage of all building materials actually. But what we've got there is uh, a concrete lintel, nice and cold. And if we go in the kitchen, look under the back of the units there, mouldy as hell. Um, all fully double glazed, tiny, tiny little ventilator there, look, little extractor fan. Lots of mould around the top of the windows. Okay, so we're getting a story, aren't we, here? Um, the damp is mainly around the floor wall junctions, and to a layman, rising damp. It's clearly not rising damp, it's actually excess humidity. Um, here we are in the bathroom, again another little cloakroom bed, fully double glazed, the ubiquitous shower, there we are, and um, we've got lots of problems. So I'm just going to show you our site and you'll see why it is that uh, these things happen. And this property doesn't need a damp course, in fact it's got a damp course, a really good one. The damp course that's in is uh, a bitumen coated, let's just have a look at it, there it is, you can see it in the bed joint. Just going along, there, just above the ground. There's no reason why that can't work properly. Um, if we just go around the back though, you'll see there's some of the issues. Let's have a look. There we are, the ground levels are very high. They've been dug down, somebody's tried to dig them down a little bit. And if we just walk along this gable quickly, have a look here, up this end. This is that side wall. We can actually see a band of damp in the brickwork at the base. And it's not surprising because there, right down there is our damp course, virtually flush with the soil. Um, a lot of rainwater splash getting past that obviously. But if we go along to this end, which is where the mould was worst, um, we've got leaky gutters up there and all that water comes down and it bounces on the soil. And it's bouncing on the soil. You can see how it's bouncing on the wall as well. This is all that mucky slurry on the wall. And the damp course is actually down here, right at the bottom. So that's not working. But we're not seeing surface disruption internally, we're just seeing mould. So that's having an effect mainly not as penetrating damp, but as a chilling effect. It's wetting the base of the wall, that's making it even colder. I mean, the ground's a great heat sink, so it's sucking out um, heat anyway. Uh, but what we're finding is this property's been suffering when it was occupied, and we want to make sure it's fine for the new tenant and the way we're going to do that is we're going to vastly improve ventilation but we're going to concentrate on repairing this external fabric lowering the path levels making sure that the gutters aren't leaking you know this kind of thing so that we've got a chance because it will be slightly humid it's an old house built for another age now with our you know people get showers every day lots and lots of water or hot water on demand we're bound to have excess humidity so we've got to help the house cope with that and on this one i'm even going to ask them to uh, maybe consider reciting the radiators i prefer to see them on an external wall rather than where it's handy for the plumber on the internal dividing walls um, because otherwise we're not actually getting any heat to those cold external surfaces now you might say that's inefficient but actually we've got to accept some inefficiency because we want the house to be mold free and nice and dry. So it's not always a damp course, although occasionally we do put those in. Cheers.